But she was never in a song that you had to sing. What was the song that you sang? Just tell me the name of it real quick. The song that I sent was You Fight On. You Fight On. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let me tell you something. The name of the title of my message is The Day of True Deliverance. Mm. So that might not have been what you sent, but that's what she got. Because that's what yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna do what God told us to do, and we're gonna move on and we're gonna do what go on and have my food. But they tell them the truth. They say, you know, that's why God's children, one of his chosen ones. If you look beyond all the air folks and, and the tone that they're using, they telling you, you're God's child. You're a chosen one. So let, let, let's keep on going. Verse 18. So this went on day after day. And Paul got so exasperated that he turned to the demon and within her and commanded, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and instantly it left. I'm going to focus on something right here. Paul allowed this demon to keep on after him and keep on aggravating him as long as he wants. And the whole time Paul is like, okay, I'm going I'm to do something. I'm going to do something. You better leave me alone. I'm going to go. It was not until Paul got fed up. And Paul spoke to that. Demon. Some of us are saying, God, I'm, I want you to deliver me from this. God, I want, I want you to keep this person away from me. Keep that person away from me. And God is saying, but you're not fed up yet. You're not tired yet. You keep allowing them to come around. You keep going back and doing the same thing over and over again. It's not until you say it out of your mouth that I can actually do something. See, we're talking about a day of true deliverance here. See, it's, it's, for long enough, we've, we've been saying, I want this done, God. I want what I need you to do. But we haven't meant it. See, it wasn't until Paul was tired of it. He, he had let it happen over and over again for so long that he's, I'm just tired of being tired now. So now I'm going to speak to this situation itself. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to tell this person. I'm not going to tell that person. I'm going to talk to that demon itself. And I'm going to let that demon know, now it's time for you to leave. Until we start speaking to our situation and those things that are bothering us and those things that have clicked please uh, clean itself to us that we have allowed it to and start until we start saying to it, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You get away from me and we truly mean it. It's going to keep on coming back. It's going to keep on saying, okay, you mad for right now, I'm going to back off. But when you're not as mad, I'm going to come back and I'm going to sneak back up on you and I'm going to be right back where, we're going to be right back where we were before. But it's not until we get tired of being tired. And we speak to the, those things, that those situations, and those things that we're in, in the midst of. It's not until then that we get exasperated. And we say, I'm not going to let this happen again. I'm not going to be hurt like this again. I'm not going to let the devil come in like this again. It's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen in my lifetime, my children's lifetime, my children's children's lifetime until we rebuke it and we mean it for sure and we don't give it any leeway of thinking, well, there's a possibility for us to get back together and reconcile, re, uh, reconcile this thing and we let it know today's the day. I need a deliverance from this thing. I don't want this anymore. Until that point, it will continue to happen. It will continue to come back. And we'll be back in the same situations that we have been in before. So verse 19 says, The girl's master's hopes of wealth were within her, and they were shattered on that day. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city was in an uproar because of these Jews. They shouted to the city officials. They are teaching, their teaching customs are illegal 
for us Romans to practice. See, the thing about this is, they weren't mad because of what Paul and Silas were teaching. They were mad because the girl got delivered. Mm -hmm. See, some of us, there are people who don't want to see us deliver. They don't, as long as we are in what we're in and we're, we're a part of what we're a part of, they're profiting from it. They live in their best life. But it's when they realize that we get delivered from this. That's when they start getting upset. Because they no longer can use us the way they used us before. They begin to realize, you know what? I had it easy, but I don't have it easy anymore. I can't do what I want to do with them no more. That's when they get upset about it. See, and not only that, but we have to remember that everybody that's saying I want to be delivered truly doesn't want to be delivered. You can't cast out the spirit if you're too busy entertaining. When you're entertaining that spirit, that's when you're saying, hey, I like what you're doing. Get away from me. Get away. No, you go on now. Get gone. Get away. But when you really want to be delivered, you're saying, uh-uh, no more. You can't live here anymore. And see, when you say that, you'll see like in the, uh, verse 22, it says, a mob quickly formed against Paul and Cyrus. And the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wood, wooden rods. See, when people realize, I can't treat you the way I treated you before. Mm. Because now you're delivered. Well. I can't do you like I did you before. because now, See, you're talking different in your yes. deliverance. You're acting different yes. in your deliverance. They gonna get mad. Yes. They gonna get mad. And it would seem like, okay, now you mad at me too. And you mad at me. A mob begins to form, and you're like, what, what? All I did was do what was best for me. And y'all are upset because I did what was best for me. I got the, the deliverance that I needed, but now you upset with me? And it's not because, well, you now you, you just act different. You done changed. I'm supposed to change. I'm supposed to act different. I'm in a different place than I was when I was under bondage. I'm in a different place. I'm in a different mindset. I don't think the same way. I don't talk the same way. I don't walk the same way. That's what you're upset with. Because you were able to manipulate me when I thought that I needed you. Now I realize that I don't need you. That all I need is God. And as long as I got God, then I'm okay. That's what people are really upset with. Yes, Lord. Yes. They're not upset with the fact that, that, that you're, you're changing and you're evolving. Because, yes. no, that's fine. As long as you can change and evolve and they can still control you, yes. then it's okay. Yes. But when they realize that, you know what, you're getting beyond my reach now, mm. that's when they begin to say, hold on, this is not right. Mm. They'll begin to speak against you and they'll begin to turn other people against you. And you begin to wonder, well, God, well, am I am I really in the right? Did I do the right thing? No, you did the right thing. God is just changing your circle. And it hurts sometimes when he changes our circles. Because when he changes our circles, then the people who we thought were there for us, we realized that they were there for themselves and they were for us as long as they thought that we were they could benefit from us. As long as they felt like they could profit from who we were and what we were going through, they were like, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, you, you just leave. You know what? You leave that situation for a week or two, but make sure you go back to it. Because if you leave from it for too long, then I'm going to miss out on what I can get out of it. Huh. My God. Today we're talking about a day of true deliverance. So let's move on to where at 16. Verse 23 says, they were severely beaten and they were thrown in a prison and the jailer was ordered to make sure that they didn't escape. See, back in this time, there was a process. If someone was arrested, they had to go to trial first. Then they were sentenced and then they were jailed. But when you get somebody so upset with you, 
because they're you no longer under their power, they'll start skipping, skip, skipping, skipping steps. And they'll do what they can in order to get what they want to get. So and it also says, uh, yeah, so verse 24 says, so the jailer put into put them into the inner dungeon and clapped their feet to the stalks. This was not the normal punishment for people who were speaking against the religion at the time. But if you are such a threat to people, yes. your very existence mm -hmm. and your beliefs will make them feel like I gotta do something more in order to keep them, to, I gotta make them change their mind to go back to what they were doing before and living the way they were living before <laughs> because right now this isn't working out with me. I gotta change their mind. They will go to the extreme to make sure that you do not prosper in the new thing that God is doing in your life. Even to so that the same people who once were talking with you and they were high five and I'm praying for you, I've been with you since day one, they will become your very jealous. Yes. They'll become the ones who will begin to speak against you. They'll become the ones who begin to say, but you can't do that. Well, you, you shouldn't do that. Well, you wrong it. Well, I bind you up in the name. You bind me up in whatever name you want to bind me up. As long as I'm living in the name of Jesus, nothing that you can say, nothing that you can try to cast on me will work. Some people say, well, we done been together for so long that you, you there ain't nothing left to you. There's nothing more you can do. God ain't done with me yet. God ain't done with me yet. Yes. Don't that time I spent in the bondage that I was in, it only taught me how to grow. Yes. It taught me how to appreciate the freedom yes. that I can find within God. Right. It taught me that, you know what, I don't have to live like this. Yes. This is not my all be all. Yes, Lord. This is not what life, the life that God intended for me. Yes. There is more. We can get to the point that we're so bogged down by everything that's going on in the midst of a true deliverance that we begin to say, well, well what, left, what is there left, God? Is this what it's going to be like now? Those people who said that they loved me most have turned their backs on me now? Everything that I thought I had, I seem like I've lost. Because when I walked away from the situation, when I walked away from the person, when I walked away from the lifestyle, it all stayed and now it's just me and you. And God is saying, that's all you need. That's all you need. So we begin to say, God, so what, what do I do now? What do I do if I'm in the midst of a true deliverance? What do I do now? He says, read the next verse. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake. And the prison was shaking to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. What do I do, God? You begin to praise God. You begin to start a revival. If you, if you, listen, if you're ever in a situation and you begin, you're in a trauma and, and there's nothing you can do and, and all your limbs are broken and everything, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the first thing they say, just breathe. Just breathe. As long as you have breath in your body, that means you can say, thank you, Jesus. You can begin to say, God, you are my all in all. God, I praise you, even though I'm in this situation, God. I praise you because I know that you're delivering, Lord. I mean, as you begin to pray, don't you know your spirit will begin to lift? And you'll begin to, what was all said about here? What was going on here? They said what? Well, God, Lord, you take care of that. They did what? Lord, you see and you know. God is saying, you know what? Quit waiting on people to tell you to have a revival. Have a revival within yourself. 
start a revival yourself. Because I'm telling you, revival is very contagious. If you start a revival and you start, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I guarantee you, if there's another true believer around you, that thing will catch on like wildfire. It'll catch on. So, here Paul and Silas are. They, I'm sure they're looking at each other. Here we go. We're in jail again. We're in prison again. How many times do we see you? Oh, really? Is that same amount of times to me? Because you know what? They were there for the gospel. They were there because they were living their life for something. They were there because they were helping somebody else get their true deliverance. It's time to stop walking around saying, yeah, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, finally baptized, but you ain't doing that. You ain't doing that. What are you doing with that fire? What are you doing with that sanctification? Some of us say, well, God, I just, I, I go and I, 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 I just don't feel you anymore. I don't, I don't feel you. I, I'm looking to be filled up, God, but, but I don't feel filled up anymore. And God said, you don't feel filled up because you're not pouring out. Mm. You're not pouring out. Mm. If, you are, if you're at a restaurant and your server comes and they see your glass is full, guess what they do? They pass you by. <laughs> they don't stop. Yes. They don't interrupt your conversation. No. They just keep going. But it's not until your cup is almost empty mm. that they say, excuse me, could you hand me your cup? Would you like some more? Mm. God is saying, in the midst of your deliverance, it's time to pour out. Mm. Pour out unto others. Yeah. Pour into other people. Let them know who God is. Let them know what God can do. Because right now, a lot of us are sitting and we're full. We're full. And God is saying, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for you to pour out. I'm ready for you to pour into other people so that they can get their deliverance. And as you pour into them and they get their deliverance, and you're doing my work, I'll pour back into you and so you can get your deliverance so that you can go and you can deliver other people. Yeah. But as long as you sit with your cup being filled, guess what? What you're going to keep doing? The waitress is waiting. The angels are waiting to see that it's, it's time for you to get another refill. God is saying, I want to deliver. I want to give you a true deliverance. But I can't give you a true deliverance if you're too busy loving what you're in. I can't give you a true deliverance if you're too busy enjoying and entertaining the, de the demons that are around you. It's not until you begin to say, enough is enough. And be like Paul and say, I, I'm aggravated with you. I'm tired of you. It's time for you to come out and go somewhere else. Yeah. When we get to that point, God will say, all right, now we're in business. Yeah. Now we can do something. Mm -hmm. But until then, we're just giving mouth service. Mm -hmm. Lord, deliver me. Deliver me. We're coming Sunday after Sunday. Pray for me. Pray that the Lord delivers me from this. Okay, I'll pray that the Lord deliver you, but is your mind and your heart in agreement on this thing? Yes. Are you ready to be delivered? Are you ready to be set free? Are you ready for God to replace your circle of friends with the ones that you already have with the ones he has for you? Are you ready for letting go of those ties of, hey, that means I can't call you no more. I can't text you anymore. I don't even want, yes, I can, I can wait. Hey, how you doing? All right, I'm gone. But I don't want to stop and hear the mess that you, go, you got going through because you're too busy in the middle, of, loving the mess that you're in the middle of. Because if I pray for you, that's energy I could be spending praying for somebody else who really does want to deliver. Yeah. Who really is trying to get out of this. But if you're loving it and you're enjoying it, I'm going to pray that the Lord backs the enemy off long enough so you can get your right mind together. 
in order for you to realize that that, that's not what I want. That's not what I need. But it's not until you get tired of being tired that anything will happen. It's not that God isn't listening to you. God knows that it's going to break your heart to the point to the where you're not, you may not even believe in him anymore. So he needs for you to be in a place when you are ready for the deliverance. So many times we're, God, you ain't took it yet. You ain't took it yet. And he said, because you ain't let it go yet. You ain't let it go yet. If I take it from you now, then it would crush you. If I took that relationship from you now, if I took that friendship from you now, you wouldn't be able to withstand it right now. And then you begin to say, well, you know what? I didn't talk to them as much as this. And then the following week, I had not talked to them. And before you know it's been a month, two months, three months. And then the Lord just done severed that whole thing. And then he says, now you're ready for the deliverance. Now you're ready for me to do what needs to be done. Now you're ready to go to that place where Paul and Silas was, where they were able to lift up God's voice, lift up their voice to God and say, God, break every chain, open every door, close whatever doors need to be closed, Lord. Don't let me go down that hall if I don't need to go down there anymore. Don't let me pick up that phone if I don't need to pick it up anymore. But if I would have done it before time, if God, see, in that verse, of Paul and Silas in the prison. It wasn't just Paul and Silas that God was freeing. It was every prisoner that was in there. So in the midst of God getting you prepared, guess what he's doing? Everybody that's in a situation along with you that's crying out to God, he's preparing them too. So that means, you know what? I got to encourage you to be ready for this next move. I got to encourage you to be ready for this next move. Because guess what? If we all not ready when it's time, God is say, hold on here. Because guess what? I love each and every one of them. I want all of them to be delivered. I want all of them to be saved. So that means I got to encourage you. I got to encourage you. I got to encourage everybody. But if you choose not to be encouraged, don't be mad at me when my shackles begin to fall off. Amen. Don't be mad at me when my doors begin to fly open and yet yours are closed. Don't be shouting out, hey, come open my door. No, God did this thing. I'm not about to go back behind God and do something that he didn't ordain. Something that he didn't mean to happen. I'm not going to be responsible for it happening. God wants us to know today, yes, deliverance is in the building. The deliverance is here for us, but if you don't want it, if you don't truly want it, if you're not real about it, step back. Because he's about to do something for his people. People been praying, Lord, it's, I've been praying about this all year long, and it's November, Lord. God is saying, I'm about to move. I'm about to move, but I got to let you know, I got to forewarn you that I'm going to do a true deliverance this time. I'm going to do a true deliverance. I'm going to cut some ties. Ha, I hear the Lord say, I'm cutting soul ties too. God said, I'm going to cut some ties. I'm going to deliver, I'm going to sever some relationships so that you won't go back. You won't, even the, uh, even the way they open the door for you to go back, God said, I'm going to close that door and I'm going to lock it. Are you prepared for that? Are you prepared for God to do this move? Are you prepared for this true deliverance that God is about to do? We, we heard the song, God delivered me. I'm, this is my exodus. Some of us are standing at the door of our exodus and we're, we're pondering. Do I really want to go? Do I really want to go? Do I really want to get out of this situation? Do I want my, do I really want a deliverance from this thing that has been attached to me for so long, for years, it's become almost a part of my personality? Do I really want this? And God is saying, my hand is stretched out. And I'm saying, come on. But the decision is yours. God will make the way for us. But it's up to us to walk in. 
It's up to us to follow through with it. The deliverance is here. God is saying, I'm, I'm opening the door. I'm breaking the chains. Are you going to stay in the prison? Or are you going to walk out? 